one of my all-time favorite people. And a shot neither I nor this Dick Butkus fan will ever forget. We're finding our Butkus and following the legacy of Bud Graham today on NFL Films Presents. This is Bob Mueller. Bob is an artist. He wasn't always an artist. But one day at the age of 45, he decided to paint a picture of Dick Butkus. Then another, and another, and about 20 more after that. Also, his wall. And that's probably when the whispering began. Most people thought he was crazy. Yeah, with the big blue wall. Initially, yeah, yeah, he seemed a little odd. I really took a step back and I kind of laugh and go, you know, this is, this is crazy. And I thought of Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and he's got a mound of potatoes in the middle of his dining room, and he's mounding it up and he's making this mountain. He has no idea why he's doing it, nothing. But he has to do this. That's exactly how I felt about this painting. I had no purpose for it. This year we're gonna work on getting the leaning forward headshot. Like many obsessions, Bob's began in adolescence when he was a kid linebacker in British Columbia. The first time I ever saw Dick Buckus, oh. Visually, the thing that sticks out in my mind was those hands and Buckus sitting there in the rain and the mud. It wasn't even the bloody knuckles, it was the dirty look on the hands. The way he held them, you know, his hands are glued together and you can look at the intensity. That's the first thing that I remember. It's haunted me most of my life. But this has haunted many lives. When you watch that guy tackle somebody, I don't know that I've ever seen anything with that much fierceness in it. I remember reading a quote from Gail Sayers saying, the hardest hits he ever took were on the practice field. And he said, there's an experience about being tackled by Dick Butkus. There's the hit, there's the initial shock and the force, and then these long arms feel like they're gonna crush your body, and then he pounds you into the ground. So there was an actual three or four stages to the tackle. It wasn't just a hit. It's grade 10, and I spend 85% of my time in the art room. And I did charcoal drawings. Just like now, 50% of them were buckus. I wanted to be an artist, and life and circumstance got in the way. So I took 30 years of building a family, and, and I became a martial artist. Oh, he didn't pick up a paintbrush for 30 years but he did pick up a seventh degree black belt in karate. Everything is foundational. In martial arts, I trained on this simple little pattern. Boom, 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 boom. I trained it over and over and over. It built my whole career. It also helped him build five karate schools with 10,000 students all over Canada. By the late 90s, Bob's life seemed complete. He had four children, and there was no reason to believe his long dormant obsession was about to resurface. My wife introduced me to yoga. It was about five or six years ago. She said, come on down and do this hot yoga. And I was like, oh, God. This was no ordinary yoga. 
This was Bikram hot yoga. Five hour sessions in 105 degree heat left Bob a changed man. When I completed this training, I felt that I'd emptied some stuff maybe that I'd carried for a long time. I went, gee, I, I'm ready for something else. And, and I didn't really know what that was. A few clicks of a mouse pointed him in the right direction. Well, I went away one weekend and I came home and he discovered eBay. <laughs> he never knew what it was before. Wow, what's this eBay thing? And basically, it wasn't, in, they didn't ask you this direct question, but I took it this way. It says, what are you interested in? What do you want? And so I went, whoa, what am I interested in? And my mind immediately went, I'm interested in Dick Butkus. Mashed potato time for Bob. Boxes started arriving with pictures of Dick Butkus. At first I found it kind of intriguing. And after a while, it was like, oh God, not another box. Guess what I got on eBay? Yeah. <laughs> I got I got a 1970s Playboy and it wasn't for the girls, it was for Dick Butkus. It was the centerfold of a 1970s Sports Illustrated that really did it for him. It's an absolutely incredible, the movement, the action. And I saw that photograph and I went, I want to draw that. That's, I just, I wanted to capture it for myself. And that's the first painting. I look at it now and it's, it's a little amateurish, but it was a start. It was enough to encourage me to uh, keep going. About three or four paintings in, I painted the bloody hands for the first time. And it's still one of my better things that I've done. It was kind of magic painting it, it just happened. Basically all I'm doing is I'm going to yoga and I'm painting butkus. I would try to paint something else, it was okay. But then I would get another butkus one. After probably about a year and a half of doing it, I said, well, there must be some reason for this. Why is this image so interesting to me? Every year, Bob and his sons made a pilgrimage to Soldier Field. In 2005, it was time for a different journey. The whole idea was I was just going to take a painting and go, please sign it, and, and uh, that was sort of the end of it. Pretty soon we're in Dick Buckus' office, lawyer's office in L.A. and He says, Dick likes your work. <laughs> Dick who? <laughs> One thing led to another, and a meeting was arranged in Pittsburgh, where Buckus was filming a TV show. imagine something for so long and it's surreal anyways it's an out-of-body experience is all I can say it's like I was just trying not to hyperventilate once he caught his breath Bob had a revelation I from a little boy had fallen in love with this iconic image which had inspired me the orange and the blue and the black and the Chicago Bears and the number 51. And Dick Buckus is a flesh and blood person. What I discovered when I met him, and it was really profound, was that it wasn't really about Dick Buckus. It was really about me. Bob didn't stop painting Buckus after their meeting, but he did have a new perspective on the image and the man that had captivated him. In actual fact, I, I think what intrigued me was the frustration you could see in his body language. Like I know by the patch on his shoulder, it's 1969. The bears are one in three. Nothing's going right. And he's sitting there on the bench in the mud going, man. 
This guy suffered through nine seasons of losing, basically. Never accomplished his goal, but he never gave up on a play. He never, you know, the guy was this amazing force on the field. That's something to emulate. By painting Butkus, Bob was emulating him. When I started doing this, it's like I came home. I went, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, I, I call it finding your butkus. It doesn't matter what your dreams are in life. It matters what passion you put behind it. If you give it your all, whether it works or not, you did something of value. That's what I think finding your butkus is. He built one career yeah. by executing the same pattern of moves over and over. Four. Now he's done it again by painting his hero over and over. My husband's a sports artist. Sports artist? What does that mean? What does he do? He draws football players. He does what? And then when they see his work, they begin to understand. It's amazing. You know, I'm really proud to call my dad an artist now. You know, it's, it's pretty incredible. Bob has finally moved on from Butkus. Now he paints many NFL legends. There's even a line of greeting cards in the works. But finding your Butkus has little to do with fortune and fame. Basically, at 51 years old, I'm acting like a kid. If you can find that childhood wonder about what you're doing and be excited about it, you got the world by the tail.